So you haven't seen any pistol shooting in a while. So I figured I'd go ahead and throw the tripod up, get the camera going and knock some out. Um, Rock'em Staccato, the XC with a uh, loop hold. Larp, 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 larp. Um, hey, what besides your training? Um Now, this thing I've had for I think two years. Yeah, a little over two years now. And it's been great. I haven't had any issues. I will say that uh, <laughs> I went quite a while without cleaning it. When I did that, there were some issues. When the gun would heat up, it'd get gummed up, slow down, and it wouldn't cycle right. But obviously we should be maintaining our uh, firearms anyway. So I just cleaned it up and haven't had any issues since. So let's go ahead and see how she does. What you can't see is I'm shooting three pieces of steel and a plate rack, which is just knocked down. So, ta-da, that's what's going on here. So I'm just gonna be wiggling you around for a little bit. Uh, a couple things that I would like to say about the Staccato. One, the balance is phenomenal. Let's go ahead and make it clear real quick. The balance on this thing is phenomenal. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean just like as the gun sits, which, if I'm just holding it right here. You know, it's no light, just a red dot. It sits pretty uh, well and even straight down. But what I mean is as the firearm cycles, right? This is sliding to the back and then forward. It doesn't have a lot of snap back. Yes, that has a lot to do with that, right? However, what that means is for your sight picture is you fire, boom, and it settles right back in. So what you can then do is find a rhythm in your shooting. And when you find that rhythm, as long as you're shooting within that rhythm, your sights are gonna settle right back where they should be. So let's see if we can knock that out real quick. All right. Now that was all on that far left side plate, the small little circle guy. I'm about, uh, 20, 25 yards, um, something like that. Anyway, and it shoots really even. Now, if I were to speed that up, if I were to speed that rhythm up, pop, 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 now I am needing to control my rhythm. I am needing to control everything, which absolutely you should be doing. Um, however, depending on where you are, you gotta go with what you got. So let's get some more shooting done. How about that? Shot timers, if you don't use them, you need to. They're great not just for starting and seeing how fast you go, but for measuring your performance. I wanna make sure I don't shoot my camera because you guys are right there. Delay.
All right, a little tricky of a guy. I got two rounds left. Let's burn him. Burn him. Burn him. Wow, a little high. Bad grip. Now, one thing, I got small hands, right? So if you look at the grip on this thing, she's pretty fat. So what does that mean? That means a couple things. One, if I were to get my traditional grip that I get on most pistols, so it looks like this. All right. <clears throat> that is going to mean that I do not have good trigger finger placement. All right. I want my trigger finger more on the trigger. I want it to be sitting right about here. Okay. So what that means is if I want to get that to gain good control, I'm going to have to sacrifice some things in my grip. Pistol's clear. Go ahead and do that. All right. To do that. Now, oftentimes people say, oh, don't let it ride the knuckle. As the pistol rides, it'll come up. They're not wrong. However, if I have good induction of movement on my support hand and I have control with that, I can fix that. There's no like right and wrong for everybody, all right? There's, there's rules, but also rules are meant to be broken. It's like riding, know the rules and then know how to break them. So I can place, or you can, not just me, I can place my hand here and put that back strap right along my knuckle. And as long as I have good control of my support hand and I am taking this thumb, support hand thumb, pressing in, taking strong hand thumb and biting, all right? But that does a lot. Some people tell you it doesn't. It actually does a lot. Boom, and I'll have good control. Now, I gotta reload. How did I get it? These things are wildly expensive, right? I made an agreement with them. I do some video work with them. Um, but now I wanted to make sure to have a significant amount of time on it. So they sent it out to me, but I've shot it quite a lot. It's uh, quit, quite beat up, it's pretty used, and I think it's fantastic. Not because they sent it to me, because in all fairness, the gun shoots really great. Now, because of the issues I've had with it, as far as if, when it was really dirty, heating up, and then getting sluggish on the uh, cycling, I wouldn't use it for duty. Unless <laughs> I was responsible and took care of my gun all the time and cleaned it after every shooting, or not even that often, but cleaned it often enough regularly, depending on how many rounds I shot and then I would see no problems. I have heard, I have a friend who's had problems with them as far as there was a piece of dirt stuck on the firing pin, somehow got in there and it wouldn't uh, ignite the primers. So that's one issue there that I've heard about. Um, I usually refer to it as a cheat code, the uh, staccatos I mean, or some models of the staccatos, uh, simply because they have a lot of mechanical fixes to biological problems. That's not my phrase. I heard it, I can't, shit. I can't remember where I heard it, but when I did, I was like, that clicks. That's, that's all, that explains a lot, right? So if you think about it, competition guns, whether they be pistols, shotgun, long guns, carbines, whatever, you're trying to pack as many mechanical fixes to biological problems in as you can so that the shooter doesn't have to maintain as high of a discipline in order to engage that or use that system as efficiently. That does not mean that the shooter is not efficient and proficient, it just means it becomes easier. So over time, we see this progression in not just gear, but also in training, because now that we have equipment that can run to a higher standard, we need to raise that standard as well. That's often what the staccato is, in my opinion. It, uh, because of the balance, because of how well um, the slide moves to the rear and back, the shooter does not have a lot of control they need to do on the recoil. Whether that be, whoops, whether that be the recoil going up into the rear as far as the path of least resistance or as the slide moves forward, snapping right back. Because of that, it means that you can get a faster sight picture inside alignment on target. Now, the triggers, it's a 1911 design, right? 2011s, blah, 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 we all know that. Now, because the triggers are so easy, they press to the rear so easy, I mean, heck, you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, Ooh, let's see if we can get a good video of this. Hold on. Boom. Now I'm gonna need to darken that. All right, boom. I'll just get a good video. All right, 
Hopefully that was good enough. We'll check later in editing. Because the triggers are so easily moved to the rear, you, ha you don't have a lot of problems. Now, you can still push the trigger left, you can pull the trigger right, depending on if you're right or left-handed. Um, you can still press down, you can still press up, but no matter what, the trigger's gonna move straight to the rear. There is very little slop left and right. So what that means is, a lot of the issues that come to shooting, they come down to the shooter, which is common. Very rarely is it the gun. Uh, so what the shooter then needs to do is make sure that they are giving proper movement onto the pistol. So that's gonna be something different for me than it is for you. There is, it's just way, whatever you need to induce at the time. For example, if I need to run a I don't know, long range semi-automatic gas gun and I need to do something up close with it, I'm probably gonna index on it like a short barrel carbine. Anyway, so back to the Staccatos. <clears throat> Everyone knows they're made in Texas, got the Lone Star on there. What, what I think is dope, you go to the website. Again, I'm not being paid for any of this. My only relationship I have with them is they sent me these to do some work on and now I'm going, now I'm doing it. Um, I have no incentive to say anything nice about them other than the incentive that the pistol demonstrates to me, which is what I'm doing. One thing that is really nice about the Staccato is uh, they do a lot of work to make sure that their pistols are really well machined. I mean, you can you can hear this listen to this All right mine's a little dirty because it gets used it's not prim and clean although if it was the photos would be dope or you know i gotta get a brush for those now let's go ahead and check this out boom now what i was sent was the pistol and three mags the three mags 17 round mags solid metal they're some of my favorite uh, for a lot of reasons. One, they're super easy to load rounds, but also when you're inserting, are they smooth? Um, I don't have to, like, actually I'll demonstrate. I don't have to do an extreme like, uh, to get them in there. No, it's just one sperm seat, boom, it's there. I have some P mags from, uh, obviously from Magpul for a Glock. That's typically what they're like. And also when you get to the end of loading those, like you get to close to the 17 rounds or whatever, it starts to get extremely difficult. Now, I don't have that problem with these. Also, they look cool. But the problem with that is they're really, really shiny so you can see them. That can be beneficial, but it can also hurt you depending on what your purposes may be. For me, I'm just using them on a flat range. All I gotta do is LARP, 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 and pretend, so I don't have to worry about anything crazy or drastic with it. Boom. And ta-da. I kind of look at, like, say, let's just compare a striker fire versus hammer fire, right? Striker fire, I look at as like an automatic vehicle versus a manual with a hammer, because you have that safety. So the biggest switch, which is really just easy, just make sure to remember it, is the second you get that index point, Second I get that index point, boom, right? There's a, if you don't know what this is, tier one concealed holster, excellent, right? That's why you don't see a light on here is because I don't have a holster for this with a light. Anyway, second I get that index point and I draw, my thumb sits right here, that thumb coming down to my grip, this hand comes up, gets that index point, boom, comes down and hits it, nice and easy. All I need to do is make sure to remember, boom, there we go, right? Obviously, I'm not drawing like this. This is for video purposes only. If you're thinking about buying a Staccato, the thing I would make sure to tell anyone is like, why are you buying it? Like, do you have the money just floating around and you just want one? Go right ahead. That's your right, do it. I don't give a shit. Like, you wanna blow your money on that? Do it, it's great. Um, it's fun. But if you're trying to buy it to fix the problems you think your pistol's giving you, I recommend you fix yourself first, okay? Uh, whether it is go get training or pay attention to videos and apply them or whatever. Um, hey, web of training. Um, I suggest you do that rather than trying to buy a mechanical fix, okay? It's just gonna make you a poorer shooter, it's gonna make you less knowledgeable. It's gonna cause a whole myriad of problems. If you're trying to buy it for competition, it's a great buy for competition. There are a bunch of reasons to do that. The uh, port on here is excellent, especially the fact that it's built into it. Uh, and 
You know, some competitions will allow that, some won't. If you're trying to buy it for duty use, I recommend if you do that, which is fine, make sure you're taking care of your firearm. Um, you're cleaning it regularly. If you haven't carried before, whether it be um, covert or overt, clean it. Lint, dust, skin, all that kind of dirt, grime can get into your gun while you're carrying it. And if you never clean it, that'll gum it up. And all you'll say is, oh, last time I shot it, it worked just fine. Well, last time you shot it might've been a month, two, three, four, six months ago, okay? And you've just been carrying the same rounds. You're not keeping up on your skills. So make sure you're not one of those guys. Those guys not only suck, they suck to be around. Don't be one of them. And if you're not shooting that much, if for some reason you absolutely can't, all right, not everyone's life is built around that, that's fine. Make sure you're still cleaning your gun though. Whether you're taking out the rounds, make sure everything's wiped down clean, oiled, lubed, properly done, good to go, all right? So that way, if the time comes, you need to draw for whatever reason, and you have to take a shot, because remember, you can also decide not to, depending on what the situation is. You have effective shots on target. Overall, right, I know this is like a very impromptu shot for the hip review. My thoughts on a Cicado are, if you got the money or you have the need, get it. But don't get it if you yourself are trying to find a way to fix your pistol. Like it's not a pistol replacement, it's just another pistol. You need to learn as a shooter that uh, how to index and how to use every platform that you come up against. And how do you do that? You do it by getting really in depth to what goes on in grip, side alignment, side picture, and to pay attention to how things are feeling, how that trigger control is being manipulated, all that. Um, if you think that your pistol is causing you problems or whatever, like more than likely it's you. Yeah, some pistols have some drawbacks, stuff like that but the shooting itself, typically they're pretty good. Now, ooh, there we go. This thing is really nice. Uh, if you don't notice, I had to, I, I've been shooting a lot with it today. I had to uh, lube it up to make sure it kept functioning because it was starting to get a little, a little sluggish, uh, which is fine, that happens. And us all as Americans, which are, we're born riflemen. Is that, can I say that? I think I can say that. Americans should be born as a rifleman, which rifleman isn't just rifle, it's firearm. So, ooh. I think they're gonna be great for competition. Excellent, I think they're fun on the range. Uh, I've not carried one in duty, I do, I have carried the Staccato C2 for a concealed carry. It's excellent, they are fatter. Uh, the grips on them because they're double stacked are fatter, but then again, you got more rounds, which is nice. Um, Sig Sauer P365s and the 365Ls, those are nice too though, they carry a lot of rounds, same caliber. Um, I do think what Staccato has done with these has been fantastic. And the fact that they're doing more to them still is even better. There are a lot of 2011 type model guns out there and companies built around them. So make sure you check all those out. I actually, I just heard about a few more that I didn't know about. They're very niche and uh, doing a lot of custom builds, but I don't know. I'll make sure the, if you have any questions, comments or anything, put them down below. I'll make sure the description's down there. I'll put a link to the exact one that I am shooting right now. Again, I have no affiliate codes or anything like that with them. They sent me two pistols to use to see what I thought. I told them I would run them for a while and then uh, I would do a video on them. Two years is a while. I put quite a few rounds. I could not tell you how many, but it's definitely within the, I don't know. I would say probably around six to 8,000 rounds through this thing in the last two years. And uh, it's been, well, I mean, it runs super slick as long as I keep it well lubed and uh, clean, so I mean, Check this out, let's see how dirty and disgusting of a person I am. All right, if you pull your finger out and she looks like that, I suggest just zipping up and going home. Unless you can clean it. Um, so yeah, also I'll put a link to the pistol holster that I'm using from Tier 1 Concealed. It's a gray holster. I like the extra level of retention. It's, I have a, let's see here. This is for one of my Glocks, it's another T1C holster. 
any holster that is retaining the pistol simply by friction, to me, I think of it as a, uh, it's a flat range holster. It's not a duty holster, not by any means. I've used this holster because it's all I had at the time and uh, had to clear out an area full of, uh, let's just say hostile persons. And going in through tight spaces and windows, pistol flew out. Pistol falling out, not never a good thing, especially when it's condition one ready to go because you need it. So make sure that if you need that extra level of retention that you're seeking something more like that. It's Fireland, all the typical guys has them. Um, make sure you check those out. So yeah, woo. And uh, as well as weapon to training, I got everything from long gun, pistol, carbine, all right? That stuff's always going on. And quite honestly, I can't wait for the 2024 season to begin. First class will be February and it will be, I think there'll be a pistol and an LPVO employment in Denison, Texas. If you're gonna be there, I look forward to seeing you. If you're not, why? Why? Do you not wanna train? Do you not wanna get better? Do you not want to hang out with the dudes, hang out with the boys, girls, meet someone like-minded? Get out and bang. <laughs>